Hello and welcome to MF Corner. I'm Sonal Bhutra in the Mumbai studio. In our Tuesday special today, we try and simplify two different subjects for our viewers. First up, with Shweta Rajni of Anand Rathi Wealth, we discuss all about investing in gold, the approach post the import duty cut, the view amid geopolitical tensions, and also the most debated, equities versus gold, where should you invest? On the other side of the break, we'll discuss and make our viewers understand about the tax benefits to retail mutual funds in Gift City for NRIs and foreigners with Jay Kothari of DSP Asset Management uh, Managers. So, Power Pack Show, let's start again uh, with uh, Shweta now. Thank you so much, Shweta, for joining us today. And there have been so many changes uh, in the budget session, right? So, let's discuss that first. How does the recent budget amendment impact gold ETFs and gold funds? And how does a gold ETF differ from gold fund after this change? Sure. So, uh, you know, what I'll do is I'll start with explaining the difference between a gold ETF and a gold fund. Uh, when you're buying a gold ETF, you're buying it at that current uh, gold rate. It, in effect, means that, you know, you're buying one transaction is one unit of 24 karat gold uh, being purchased. Whereas in a gold fund, you're ultimately, it's again, investing into a gold uh, ETF. So it's kind of a fund of buying an ETF. Uh, gold ETF from a cost perspective is more efficient than a gold fund. ETF uh, means you can exit any time in a gold fund. Generally, you have an exit load. Uh, coming to the tax, you know, which has uh, basically changed. Earlier, uh, from 1st April 23 onwards, if you invested in a gold ETF or a gold fund, it meant uh, irrespective of the holding period, you would be taxed at your slab rate. Post the budget changes. Uh, if you have invested into a gold ETF and your holding period is more than 12 months, it will be categorized as long term and will be taxed to you at 12.5%. Whereas in a gold fund, uh, if you hold it for two years, then it will be considered as long term and taxed to you at 12.5%. Anything below that is short term and taxed at the slab rate. So actually, uh, the uh, you know, post the budget changes, gold ETF becomes more tax efficient as compared to a gold fund. However, if you're looking at flexibility in terms of, uh, uh, you know, wanting to do SIP investments or a few other things, then you have to choose. But from a tax perspective, ETF is better than a fund. Okay. So let's talk about all of these asset classes together. What do you prefer? Sovereign gold bonds, gold ETFs or gold funds? Can you explain what works for each category? And if someone has to pick one, which one would that be? So, uh, you know, my vote, uh, irrespective of which category you are uh, as an investor, would be towards a sovereign gold bond fund. And uh, the reason I say that, one is in a sovereign gold bond fund from a tax standpoint, uh, if you hold it on till that eight-year maturity period, and then on uh, the maturity, the capital gains are tax-free for you. Uh, second benefit of a sovereign gold bond fund is that apart from the gold price movement, you also benefit from a 2.5% of interest payment coming to you every year which is taxed to you at uh, your slab rate. So one, it gives you not just uh, gold returns tax-free, it also gives you an additional return. However, the downside is you it's not liquid, so you'll have to hold it on in most cases till the eight-year period. So if you have that time horizon, I would vote for going in for an SGB. Okay, all right. So sovereign gold bonds still after whatever changes have come, continue to remain the top pick when it comes to investing in gold via different ways. Uh, what about physical gold, Shweta, the import duty card, but had, that has reduced the final price for those who invested some time back. Uh, so it has happened with sovereign gold bonds as well. But how do you look at this particular way of buying gold or investing in gold? See, uh, investing in physical gold does not make sense because, you know, you'll have storage costs uh, attached to it. Plus, uh, uh, you know, there are other uh, uh, disadvantages, I would say, in the form of uh, liquidability, you know, you having to go and sell it in the market. So uh, physical gold, I would say, no, no. Uh, also, you know, import duty cut is just one of the factors that affect the gold price. Uh, a major impact towards the gold price comes in from what is the international price of the gold as well as your uh, exchange rate. That tends to have a higher implication on the gold than the, uh, you know, uh, custom duty cut. So therefore, if you know you're looking from that perspective, I would say uh, go in for a SGB than even a physical gold. 
Hmm. Okay, all right. Uh, so physical gold is not something that you pr would prefer so much against the other options. But say between a silver ETF and a gold ETF, which one do you think is more popular? Which one would possibly give better returns to an investor? So, uh, you know, uh, silver ETF also in the last few years has been emerging and there's uh, been enough uh, takers for it. But if I look at in terms of cost efficiency, a gold ETF tends to be more cost efficient than a silver ETF. Second, in terms of uh, liquidity, the liquidity for gold ETF, if you see, is also better than that of a silver ETF. So while uh, you know we being used as hedge against inflation and having an alternate asset class, both would work. But just looking at these two factors, I would still go in for a gold ETF than a silver ETF. All right, so gold ETF it is. And Shraddha, how much should gold be as a part of your overall portfolio? So uh, you know, I'll just take a minute to explain how gold really performs. So gold, to a large extent, is a sentimental asset class as well. And it tends to perform well when there is concerns around, uh, let's say, you know, geopolitical issues or uh, there is concerns around inflation. So if you specifically, you know, take periods like, let's say, the COVID period where equity market uh, corrected significantly. And, uh, you know, if I just see there was almost a 38% correction, uh, which happened from the peak to the draw. Gold at that time gave you positive 7-8% return or, you know, times like Russia, Ukraine, which happened uh, where, again, equity markets were correcting. Gold ended up giving you a 3-4% positive return. Uh, but this is only specific periods. If you look at longer term cycles of gold, they tend to give you returns which would be lower than equity but 1-2% higher than that of gold. So if I'm looking at a 10-year period, for example, debt uh, would have given you 7%. Gold would have given you around nine nine and a half percent. Equity would have given you around twelve percent. Coming to the risk debt, of course, if it, this is government paper, it's risk free. Uh, the standard deviation of gold works out as around you know somewhere nine percent for a ten year period, and that of equity works around is twelve uh, percent. So therefore, uh, you know if you have a complete equity debt portfolio that is also just fine to have but if you want to infuse gold then to my mind it should not be more than a five percent allocation of your entire portfolio so you know let's say if you are a long-term investor you're looking at a 15 year time horizon or you know 10 year time horizon i would say 70 to 75 percent of your money can be towards equity uh five percent odd can be towards let's say gold and 20 odd percent can be towards debt instruments that you have all right so that's the ideal portfolio that you can look at in case you want to split it between debt equity and gold shweta always a pleasure speaking with you thank you so much for joining us today it's a big development that took place so always good to get in some expert advice on what's happening with gold etfs funds and sovereign gold bonds with that, we'll take a quick break. On the other side, we'll be joined by Jay Kothari of DSP Asset Managers. We'll discuss about the tax benefits to retail mutual funds and Gift City for NRIs and foreigners and try and understand what really uh, went by in the budget this time. Stay tuned for that conversation.